Hi guys, so the AWS storage services um, that we're gonna cover in this section include Amazon S3, Amazon Elastic Block Store EBS, and the Amazon Elastic File System EFS. So as with most of the actual sort of core services, you'll find them in the domain free under technology here, identify the core AWS services. And as I mentioned before, there's also a billing and pricing element that you have to understand and security for each service. So let's head over to the practice tests. So we'll get started. And the first question asks, which of the following statements is correct about Amazon S3 cross region replication? So you can replicate your data. Remember I said that data is not replicated by default, but you can configure Amazon S3 to replicate your data between regions. So what facts are true are correct about cross region replication. Does it require both the source and destination buckets to have versioning disabled? Well, I don't believe that's true. I think they actually have to be enabled. So you have to enable versioning on your buckets, which keeps multiple versions of your objects when you update them. And you have to do that on the source and the destination. So this is incorrect. The source and destination buckets cannot be in different AWS regions. Well, that defeats the purpose of cross-region replication. So yeah, absolutely. In fact, they have to be. S3 buckets configured for cross-region replication can be owned by a single AWS account or by different accounts. Well, is that true? Well, yes, I believe that is true. So you can actually configure cross-region replication between buckets that are owned by one account or by different accounts. So I like that answer. The last answer we'll just check out. The source bucket owner must have the source and destination regions disabled for their account. Well, no, then it's not gonna work. You must have the regions enabled in your account. So we'll check this answer. And sure enough, that is correct. And let's have a look at a slide with a bit more background on cross-region replication. So there's actually two different types of replication here. We've got cross region and we've got same region. So with cross region, you're replicating between two different AWS regions, always. And the source and destinations must have versioning enabled. That's true of any replication here. So the same region replication as well. And the accounts on the source and destination can be the same or different accounts. And then with same region replication, the accounts can also be the same or different and the buckets are in the same region. So you're replicating between buckets in the same region. So why would you do that? Well, there's lots of reasons. You might want to consolidate log files from lots of different buckets into a single log file. It might be just to create a backup of your data within the region, something like that. The next question asks, which AWS service can serve a static website? So which of these can you use to run a static website? Well, is it Amazon S3? Well, the first answer there looks appealing to me because yes, you can actually configure a static website on Amazon S3. And all you really need to do is specify an index.html and optionally an error.html file. And then you can upload your static assets to your bucket and it will serve them as a website. So we'll select that. Now, what about Amazon Route 53? Well, Route 53 is a DNS service, so a domain name system service. That means it resolves domain names like amazon.com to an IP address. So it might help to get your users to your static website, but it doesn't run a static website. And what about QuickSight? Well, QuickSight is a service that delivers business intelligence data. So it's nothing to do with running a static website. AWS X-Ray is a service used for tracing and debugging applications. So that's not gonna be right either. So S3 sounds like the best option. Let's just check that answer. And as you expected, that is the correct answer. So let's have a look at some additional features of S3. So here's a few things. The static website hosting is down here in the list. So yes, you can absolutely run a static website on Amazon S3. You can also do transfer acceleration. This is where you can speed up uploads of data to your buckets, and it uses the CloudFront network for that. There's something called request to pays, which means that when somebody transfers data from your bucket, they actually pay the fees, so sort of outbound date transfer fees, and that would be another account holder on AWS. You can use tagging with Amazon S3, and you can configure events so you can trigger other services like Lambda. 
and you can even use the BitTorrent protocol with Amazon S3. Let's just do one more question for this lesson. Which feature enables fast, easy, and secure transfers of files over long distances between a client and an Amazon S3 bucket? Well, I just gave that one away because we saw it in the previous slide. So hopefully S3 transfer acceleration is gonna jump out at you. And therefore, let's just select that one and then go and check the other ones and make sure that they're not correct. What about S3 static websites? Well, that's not a method of transfer of files. Um, so you wouldn't use that. S3 copy, well, that's a way that you can copy data in S3, but it's not gonna give that sort of fast, easy, secure file transfers over long distances. That's not really what it's for. Multi-part upload means that when you upload larger objects, they get broken into lots of pieces and uploaded in parallel to increase throughput. But really transfer acceleration is the best answer here. So we're gonna choose check. And yes, that is the correct answer. So when you use transfer acceleration, you actually only pay the extra fee, it does cost more, but you only pay if you actually benefited from the extra speed that you got from using transfer acceleration.